Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Sports View. I'm Ron Cameron. And I'm Mark Unger. And our sponsors on the show today, Uncle Al, Al Dietrich Oldsmobile. Where the runway ends, the deals begin. Uncle Al has declared war on high prices. Top Hat. you got to tell them where they're located, Uncle Al. Where is Uncle Al? Waterford? On the M59, uh, right by the Pontiac Waterford Airport. It is in Waterford, though. Well, I said where the runway ends, the deals yeah, well, begin. Yeah, but you could be talking about the runway at the <laughs> airport. airport. You could be talking about somebody's dr dr <laughs> driveway in the, the garage or anything. Who knows what could you be mean? could be Cameron's airstrip. Top yeah. Hat, the best little burger in town. Well, you'll find Ron, hit, Ron uh, Cameron with his buddy Bob Page well, all Bob the time. Bob Page's jockstrap. I think they took it down the finally. Sting, the Sting, located at James Cousins at Greenfield, the hot nightclub. Cattleman's Meat Center. David Roth and the guys take care of you down there. Their new location in beautiful downtown Hamtramck. <laughs> yeah, beautiful downtown American Hamtramck. Jeep Eagle, <laughs> where you get a good deal and a good deal more. T in Monroe, Pagers, you got to say where in these Monroe, places in Monroe. are. T-Com Pagers, Fred Wetzel and the gang, they do a nice job there. If you need a pager, go see Fred. Sports Fans Journal. What issue now? We're on the 11th issue of the third year. This thing's going 84 pages, four color. It's going fantastic. We want you to, as one of the subscribers, all you have to do is dial this number 24 hours a day where the celebrities write. Sports Fans Journal, 751-1818. I got to hand it to you, Cameron. It's a great magazine. It's going it's well. It's going well. Doing well. Pass, Pro-Am Sports Systems, Binary Computers, Woodward at 12 Mile, John Waters and all the boys there, and Duke's Seafood. Nice, Tell us great about Duke's. Oh, will yeah. You? Duke's is unbelievable. <laughs> Nice commercial and coming up in a few minutes and they are located on East Nine Mile, just east of I-75 and they got some great seafood. All right, let's talk about the Tigers. Ron Cameron's First we got to say the team. guest. See who oh. the guest is. All right. Oh, I'm so excited to get into this Tigers thing with you because I can't wait to bust yeah. your britches about them, how bad they are. But our guest on the program today, Tim Markham, head coach of the Detroit Drive. That should be a lot of fun. I know Tim's got a lot of interesting things to tell us about sure. arena football and other subjects. And well. they play a home game this weekend. Too. Yes, they do Welcome Friday night. What do you uh, want to talk about the I Tigers? I want to talk about the Tigers. Now, here are the Tigers. The team Ron Cameron said it was really not that bad. He contends that they're better than the first place Baltimore Orioles. They have more meantime, talent than the first time Baltimore they Orioles. They have lost 10 of 11. They finally won the game Sunday night, but they're just. It's not ball. Sunday night. You don't play Sunday nights at Tigers Stadium. It's oh, Sunday you play afternoon. Sunday afternoon. Same difference. Well, it's, been a, it's just been an awful year. Very yeah. simple. I still think, you know, talent wise, Baltimore can't compare with the Tigers. I know they're on top because everything's gone their way this year. They haven't had a lot of injuries, and they're a hungry ball club, and hungry means a lot in sports yeah. today. You know, I guess you're right. Guys like uh, Hudson, very talented pitcher there, finally won his first game in seven starts in two years. Name me, th name me six or seven Baltimore Orioles. That, that are good ball players. How about the Ripkins? Ripken, not Pettleton, one Ripkins. Pettleton good one. leading the league. I don't care. How about that good. outfield? They've got five outfielders, not just three. Five with good hands, good speed, and good bats. Triple A ball players. <laughs> How All these guys that, have been. Ron? A lot of these guys have been released by the ball club. You're talking about young players that weren't even considered. Uh, said a prospect. They in put the them meantime, in there they they're putting else. up numbers that are leading the division. What does that tell you about the sport of baseball? It tells you. It tells you. It tells you when you got a hundred. Very weak, but very it's better weak. talent than what the Tigers have. Then why did they finish forty some games behind the Tigers last year? I'm not were... concerned about what they did last year. Right now they're leading the division, and the Tigers have just they have the worst record in baseball. They have the worst record in baseball, but they have more talent than Baltimore. If they if they had their pitching together, they'd be contending right now. <sighs> it's a good thing. You're it's not a bad a ball lawyer. club. Still, it's a good thing. Well, why it's a good thing I'm not a lawyer? Because <laughs> you don't have the facts. The facts, the best record in baseball in the 1980s, and they, sl they, have, they have a bad year. You're talking about Baltimore, who just about had the worst record of the 80s? Don't tell me about talent. The Baltimore Orioles, what did they do in 19, what was it, 83? The Tigers have a much better record than Baltimore Orioles in the 80s, and Baltimore is one of the weaker teams in the 80s because of the last three years. Yeah, but they're not in the, we the weaker team this year. They're well, they, the division, they, 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 they deserve, deserve the credit, year. and the Tigers do not deserve well, I agree the with that. They're in first Tigers place. Tigers haven't brought up anybody, the Trammell, Whitaker, Paris, those kind of guys, in, in five, six, what, ten years. No, not ten they years. They just don't have it, Ron. Well, they don't have it in the farm system. I think they that don't they've have got it an a, what, do, do you know what they have in double-A and A-ball right now? Well, you keep talking about double-A and A-ball. Uh -huh. That's so far removed. That's, that's like the hockey draft. You that's don't a year see or two these ago. guys for five you years. You don't? What about Baltimore? They had those same players, and they're up in the big leagues now. What do you say about that? Well, I guess you're right, Ron. Right. <laughs> usual I hate to admit Ron Cameron's right. Yeah. All right, let, let's talk about uh, something that just took place here. The Women's U.S. Open at Indian One. You can talk great about Great finish. It. Betsy King did a fantastic job, won the tournament. She really handled the course this week. There was a lot of good golf out there. Patty Sheehan, and not only that, the crowds came out. You know they had 90,000 people come That's out to watch golf. That's real good to see for ladies' golf. That's excellent it, to it's see. It's incredible. It just shows you the enthusiasm that the people have 
around they here. They can have it. You won't see me there area. if they have a, uh, 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 a million people. You, I won't be one of them to watch no. it. But but it's good to see. It's good to see That's that people. That's because you don't recreate outdoors like the rest of the Michigan. I go outdoors. Do. I just don't go to <laughs> golf. You don't. go outdoors to get in your car I just and to get out of your car. I can't stand golf. That's all. Well, it's like it's it. a, a lot of people in this area can, and there were some great golf played on the west side of the state this past weekend, where a no-name, John David Kane, I think his name was, uh, his name never, is. never played. Yes, he's not dead, is never, he? Never played a PGA match in his life, qualified for the seniors tournament on Monday, and ends up winning the thing. That's only happened once before the in the seniors? history of the PGA. Well, it tells you anything can happen, yeah, but it's, right. it's good to see guys that when they can leave their stockbrokers' jobs and go out on the weekend, win a golf tournament. There's plenty of golfers around, and they do uh, have fun out there. I was up north this weekend myself playing a little golf. Let's talk about the Pistons. They did a couple of things. They got Scott Hastings, and they inked Joe Dumars to a new large contract. Well, I hope that doesn't do anything to Dumars like it does. It seems like everybody else on the long-term contracts, but Joe Dumars deserves it. In my opinion, Joe Dumars is... One of the most underrated players in the NBA today. I think he's the best guard this team has by far. And I think if anybody deserves it, Joe Dumars does. So I'm really happy for Joe because he's just a class act and uh, it's good to see. Hate to agree with Ron Cameron again, but Joey Dumars deserves whatever he gets. Here's yeah, a Scott guy Hayes. that lives by hard work. Yeah. And, it came and, through and, and he doesn't have the big ego like other people. You know, not I don't know. And I don't think it'll affect him the big contract. I, think I hope not. I hope not. I don't, I don't well think it will either, but I said that about a lot of people and it proved wrong too. Uh, the Scott Hastings movie, he's a role player, he can, you know, he can mix it up down under, he's got some size, he's not a great shooter, he's a bit of a bricklayer when it comes to shooting uh, under four points for his career, but uh, he's got a little size in there and uh, I think he'll make the ball club. Do they just want to get another guy the size of Mahorn? Somebody that size there wise, it it's basically going to be a role player like Mahorn was, he's not a Rick Mahorn, but mm -hmm. uh, Scott Hastings does have some tools on the rebounding end and the defensive side, toughness, things like that. I don't think it's a big move, but... No, uh, it's not a big move, but it's, it's a move that they didn't have to give up anybody to get because he was a free agent. They didn't have to give up anybody, so, hey, it, it, what the heck, let's give it a shot. And the big news, as far as I'm concerned, the Lions have opened minicamp. That's a big news. <laughs> I think you're going to see a very good Lions team this year. I'm looking for a 500 record out of this team, and that is a big improvement in one year. Obviously, Bob Page wasn't the only guy that, uh, that drank before the show here. <laughs> 500 season for the Lions this I year? I really think so. I really have think you checked so. your schedule? Well, I'll tell you what I like about the Lions. That they have some great coaching, and they have not had coaching in years. Wayne Fonts, forget about the players he got. Before he got the players, he went out and got the coaches, and I think it's going to make a big, big difference for you this You could team. have Vince Lombardi here in a horse race, and he's got a mule. Is he going to win it because Vince Lombardi's coaching him? I think the Lions have some talented players. They certainly got a great one in Barry Sanders, whether he works out or not. And I'd like to talk to Tim Markham about that when we bring yeah, him on. Yeah, about the style and the run shoot, stretch offense, whatever you want to call it. Usually you like to have the one block, it's a one back offense. You like that back to block. Barry Sanders has never blocked before. It'll be interesting, but he's an explosive type player. I don't think with their schedule there's any way the Lions go. If they win six games, it's a, it's a successful season. Well, you heard it here first. They're going to win eight, and uh, I think you're going to see a good year. We'll be back. That would be a good year if they win With eight. our guest, Tim Markham from the Detroit Drive, right after this. a new generation of Oldsmobiles. At Al Dietrich Olds GMC Truck. Choose from a great selection of Oldsmobiles. Including Cutlass Supreme and the restyled Cutlass Sia. Or hundreds of GMC trucks in stock. Complete with an Uncle Al price that can't be beat. For sales or service. Let Uncle Al come through for you. This is the new generation of East of the Pontiac Airport. On M59 in Waterford. If you're a sports fan, you should be reading this. Sports Fans Journal, home of the celebrity columnist. Just $15 a year to subscribe. Our writers, Ernie Harwell, George Kell, Denny McLean, Jim Northrup, Don Cherry, Dick Vitale, George Allen, Bob Feller, Larry King, and a whole lot more. Sports Fans Journal, a must for all sports fans living in Michigan or anywhere in the U.S. Call our 24-hour hotline at 751-1818. Sports Fans Journal is sold at newsstands, bookstores, and Tiger Stadium souvenir stands. Call now, 751-1818. If you travel across Michigan but still need to be in touch, you need a personal pocket pager from TCOM Paging. 
TCOM is Michigan's only paging service with true wide area state coverage service. And with TCOM, a local phone call is all it takes to beep you anywhere. TCOM offers quality pagers by Motorola, like the Motorola Sensa, sleek and elegant. It even displays your paging message. So when you travel, stay in touch with a pocket pager from TCOM from just $12.95 a month. Find out more. Call TCOM today. For great seafood, head over to Duke Seafood Restaurant on nine mile, a quarter mile east of I-75 in Hazel Park. All the seafood at Duke's is cooked to order, whether it's freshwater perch, pickerel, homegrown catfish, hand-battered shrimp, or fish and chips, Duke's is for you. Also serving Italian specialties. Duke's is open seven days and has daily specials. For carryouts, call 542-5400. I'm Duke. For over 40 years, people have enjoyed my seafood dishes. Come and discover Duke's for yourself. I promise you'll be satisfied. <laughs> Duke's quite a man. Stop by Duke's. It's a nice seafood restaurant in, in Hazel Park. <laughs> We're back with uh, Tim Markham, the coach of the Detroit Drive. Yes, the Detroit Drive in action this year. That's you right. do not know what the heck was going on. You're not exactly playing a 162-game schedule this year, though. No, you know, it's a pretty good coach's uh, season. You play four games and then go into the well, playoffs. I mean, <laughs> hell, I can do that. I can go. But you're well, defending well, champions. Well, wait a minute. Not, yeah. Not. Don't give yourself too much credit. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But your, your perfect record, 2-0. and Both oh. games on the road. The last one, what, 39-7? Played pretty good uh, Against football. Maryland. Right? Against Maryland and, uh, and the Chicago Bruisers the first game. So well, you get, you got a home game coming up this weekend, right? The 21st, Friday. Friday the 21st. Uh, we'll play in Joe Lewis Arena. Hopefully we'll have a, a big Packed crowd. Packed house. Yeah. Now, uh... Are, they, are the fans going to recognize any of these guys? You've got a lot of new faces you on know, this we, team. You know, we started with seven of the original uh, championship, team. championship team. And we got Steve Griffin, a young man from Purdue, was an all-Big Ten receiver. Got him hurt in the first ballgame. So uh, we're hopefully we've got enough nucleus with uh, those guys. We've got Reggie Mathis uh, from Oklahoma who's playing pretty good football right now for and us. Quarterback? Quarterback is uh, Mike Trigg. A uh, young man who just uh, was released, was by, released Minnesota. by Minnesota. Yeah, I think he threw four touchdown passes last week. Yes, he did. Week. <laughs> See, arena statistics are a little different than uh, the regular game, but uh, you know, we hopefully we hope that uh, we can be as exciting. And uh, put on the show. That's all we are. We're that, show business. That's what I was going to say. Guys yeah. don't come out to see the players, you know, by name. They come out to see the kind of football that you well, play there. You know, that's true. I, I think that they. Along the last of the season, uh, we started uh, recognizing some of the names, you know, the Dwayne Dixons and so forth. But, you know, regardless of what competition you're in, uh, if you know or what, whatever you're watching, if you know some of the people, it makes it a little more interesting. You know, if you have two dogs out in the front lawn mating. <laughs> well, he one, has that all the time. And one in of the them Cameron's is, house? You know, and one of them is your dog. <laughs> if one of them is your dog, you got a lot more interest. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess there is a little bit of interest there. I guess Not that's to a good way the of dog, putting it. You know so what are some of the familiar names on the team now? Well. If that's what you're saying. Now, is, wait a minute now. Okay, all right. <laughs> Novo Bojovic. Oh, there you go. Uh, that's a familiar name. That's Novo. a guy. Let me tell you Novo Bojovic thing before we go any further. Novo uh, oh, Cameron's got a great we Novo story. Good, <laughs> <laughs> this clown, and I say that directly because he is a clown. Yeah. Well, anyway, he... Uh, uh, I guess we were when I was doing my radio show from the road a while ago. We were getting guests on the show, and unbeknownst to he had stiffed us once on the show, and then we uh, so so the producer called him, and this is the honest to God truth is what this guy's saying. He says, "Well, he said uh, I better not judge." And John Sally, who's our guest, the next show is listening to this uh, thing. He's liable to go in negotiations here. Said, well, now if, is it an hour and a half hour? And he said, "Now what? You see, because there's different. Now for a half hour I charge this, yeah. and for an hour I charge you this." He said, kiss the ground, we invite that guy on. <laughs> yeah. Don't invite him back. Well, see, so. this is the new Novo. This I would hope it would be a new Novo. The old one stunk, <laughs> I thought. This well, I, I coached in the USFL and coached and when, in San Antonio. And uh, that was the most hated guy. The gunslingers, guy. weren't they? Yeah. See yeah. that? Boy, I'm, you're, oh, you're right you're on top. Right I'm on top of them today. Do that, that, was the, that was the most hated guy in the USFL. No question of it. <laughs> but uh, but to his team, they love him. Well, you know, another he, thing he's he had a said, great he was, guy to be around now. I mean, he really is. He's he's a lot of fun. We well, the, well, the one thing that got me what, what Nova had said that is that uh, uh, Murray choked on a field goal. He said, "I'd have kicked that." You know, you know he choked on it. So what, in the <laughs> well, in you're one bringing of the back games, some old I'm things here now. And what does he do? He comes out yeah. and he go takes a pipe and then the championship game and it costs <laughs> everything too. Yeah, yeah. Well, but you're well, having you're, fun you're coaching living, this team, aren't you? Yeah, it's it is fun. It's uh, you know, it's a coach's. Dream. It's a little simple game. You, you don't spend uh, eight, ten hours a day in preparation. 
they can only do so much. Just eight guys out there. Okay, who now? Who you're playing this weekend? We're playing the Denver Dynamite. D now that's a team that I coached the first year. Okay, so that's you know right. some of the players on the team, and you're familiar oh, with oh, Den Denver them, Dynamite. Yeah. The Denver Dynamite. Yeah, that's a pretty good nickname, I guess. Yeah, not too bad. I got to tell you, coach, that is a gorgeous championship <laughs> ring. You know. The man uh, mm. does things one way. That's first class. I'm talking about Mr. Illich, and he bought uh, all of the players, the managers, the trainers, and so Beautiful forth ring. a championship ring. Well, you guys deserve it. It was a great championship. Well, we had a lot of fun with it. You know, and like you know, it's like we say, we're in the entertainment business, and uh, we average nearly 15,000 people for mm. each game. I, I find that hard to believe that 15,000 people will go down to Joe Lewis Arena to watch a game they really don't know that much about. Yeah. You know, we opened up with 16-7 on a Thursday, 16,700 people. You come on last year. Last year, five blocks away, the Tigers had 22,000 and the Pistons had 29. Mm. Same day. But you know, that Only just, in Detroit. That's right. That shows you exactly the kind of great sports town Detroit is. The future of the Detroit Drive. You almost didn't get out of even play this well, year and last year and all that stuff. Uh, just very briefly, uh, we've had some problems at the you know, administrative level. Like so the speak. league president, nobody got along with him. <laughs> well, that's... Foster you know, isn't his name? <laughs> Jim Foster. But what we're doing right now is we're, we're going to play in 12 different arenas throughout the United States, an exhibition type season. This is like Bingo Long and his traveling all-stars. Mm -hmm. And and if all is successful, you go if back it is into successful, full we'll go year. back eight to ten team league with the arena operators, and that's where that's what, where what was the downfall of the uh, of, of of it before? I know the Detroit team drew well, and one other team I believe drew real well. Well, you know, uh, in a nutshell, it's just uh, that you have to own the arena, I think, to be successful. I think we you know we do, and uh, when you get them in there, you can sell them hot dogs and cokes and beer and so forth, and that makes that's a lot where of you make the money. That's the icing on the cake. That's what they tell me. They our, tell you right. That's our guest on the show is Detroit Drive head coach Tim Markham, and I want to talk about that championship season a little bit with and you. And the U.S. Uh, in the general in the league and all that. And the game coming up Friday right after these messages. not too many years ago as a defensive back with the Pittsburgh Steelers after my playing career at the University of Michigan had ended. Now I'm proud to be co-owner of the Sting, Detroit's most dynamic nightclub. We've got continuous live DJs, continuous videos, and live entertainment every weekend. But you don't have to disco. The Sting is also a great after work place to meet other professional people who frequent our lounge. So stop in and see us at the Sting. We're in the old Playboy Club, the largest greenfield, with plenty of lighted, secured parking. Hey, where's the meat? It's right here at Cattleman's Meat Center, where you can buy fresh, lean, top quality beef, pork, veal, poultry, even fish. Packing house style, save up to 40%, quality guaranteed. Where's the meat? Come inside our 3,500 square foot cooler for everyday low prices like T-Bones and Porterhouse, just $2.29 a pound. Cattleman's Meat Center, Eastern Market Area, and Hamtramck. No limit, save up to 40%. You said it, honey. Back on Sports View with the head coach of the Detroit Drive, and that is a guy that not only won the championship last year, Tim Markham, or in the last season, but you won two in a row. Did luck, you? I think it must be luck, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> a lot of people don't know that it was two different teams. Let me tell you something. Good players make good coaches. And, uh, so that's what I was. That's what I was telling this guy. Good <laughs> players make good coaches. You can be the greatest coach in the world, but if you if you're going to the Kentucky Derby with a mule, you're in trouble. I don't care what kind of coach you are. Well, what if it's a super mule? <laughs> it's just still in trouble. <laughs> I, I'll say this. Uh, I'm I'm excited about what Mark brought up about the the Lions and the staff that they have. I think. Oh, good uh, staff. It's a good staff. You know, once when you say good players and all, someone has to make the the decision about what players are going to be where and so forth. And I think that one thing they've done right off the bat is that they have increased team speed. And they, have, mm -hmm. they can line up with about six guys at the four positions 
and be 4-4 or better. But you're talking now about when race is the last, horses? Okay. When is the last time that they've had that type of speed? Total you are speed. totally right in your sure. observation there. However, yeah. who's going to get them the ball? Well, oh. <laughs> yeah. they've, got, they've got four different guys, three yeah. of which would have no problem getting him the ball. Rusty Hilger has a very good yeah, arm. Rusty is very, very, very erratic. His percentage last year was terrible. Well, very erratic. Ron, who was he throwing to? Guys that were dropping the ball no, all the time. No, he, he yes, was under throwing guys over that were dropping everything the ball all ball. the time. And you look at and Rodney Pete, he could do a very the good Lions, job. And if, if they, Chuck Long ever comes to fruition, there's another guy. Let me tell you something. You don't come in as a rookie off of, of, of a, and learn a new offense, learn a whole new league, and be the starting quarterback. Would you be surprised? If the Lions started Rodney Peter quarterback and finished 500 this season, Tim? Well, I, you know, the thing is, I think they have a, a, a core of quarterbacks that someone is going to step up. Somebody's going to step hey, up, but it's going to be difficult the, the first year. You know, I'm the guy that's going to do it. And, yeah, but. And I think that. Who uh, is the guy? Well, I mean, Rusty if we knew that. Texas Rusty Hilger has been released by four different teams. I Nobody wanted him. They got him. They got him for, from me, the schoolyard. They would, by the way, we, we, we need a quarterback. How many guys are released by four different teams before they finally they make their mark? It happens a all the time, Ron. They said, we're hard up. We need a quarterback. Earl uh, Boyle wouldn't do it for us. Let, let me ask you this. I think there was a guy in Baltimore that was had pretty close you're to the same. But you're not Johnny you, Unitas? Yeah, but Johnny yeah. Unitas is our. Uh -huh. This guy is not a Johnny Unitas. Well, no, wait a minute. Rusty Hilger. The thing about it, you asked the question, mm -hmm. okay? And it's a new offense. There's you no know, way this team can finish. Who, do, who is going to be? You know what? This team is a new offense. Let me answer this question here, okay? If we knew who was going to be the quarterback, then Miles and those guys wouldn't be out there right now throwing the ball around. So yeah, that tells you what so right there. The how they're, they're in trouble. That tells you right there. They're Doesn't in trouble. tell you they're in trouble. I think they're gonna. I think someone's going to step up, and I think it's going to be an exciting Barry year. New offense. It's, they're going to take a year or two to get the kinks out of this. Know. Maybe not. Interesting. Barry Sanders make that much of a difference? He can. In this type of offense? He can. He certainly can. You know, we were talking about that earlier, and Barry Sanders, if he puts that helmet in some chests and blocks. Could be the greatest thing that ever happened to the In his size? Team. Because he could. What are you trying to you know, say? I'm trying to say that when you're that small, when you're smaller, it's easier to get under a guy and put your helmet in his chest. It's easier to get That's knocked right on your derriere and be out for a while, too, and get hurt doing it that way, too. Not when you're a Heisman Trophy winner. Not what when the you Oh, you think the guys on the other line said, oh, we're not going to hurt this guy, he's a Heisman Trophy winner? No, but he didn't get to be a Heisman Trophy winner by laying down, Ron. The guy can play football. I'm saying the guy can run with the ball. This Let me ask you this. This is talking about a blocker here, and he never How blocked How do you in know college. he can't block? He never blocked in college. Ron, I, let, I, let me I, ask you this, okay? Have you you've seen the, this young man? He's 5'8", 210 pounds, right? Mm -hmm. Well, he is not a small person. He is still small by any He is a big, though. small guy. Okay. Well, all right. Now, what would what can, can difference you ask would a guy it make? like that to block at his size and the fact that he never really blocked in let college? Me ask, let me ask you this: What difference would it make if his eyes were up here, if he were six two? I think it blocking makes a little bit of pounds. difference. You think? Yeah, a little bit of difference. You do you do you would you? Of course, you never played the game, so you don't really. Have know. you? Yes, oh, I have yeah, played doing the game. What? I, I played plenty of football. Oh, yeah. High school, touch, country touch, day. Touch, touch, Country day, touch, they're doing touch, great. Uh, we touch, went to the football. state championships the first year. What do you uh, honestly think the Lion fans can look forward to this well, season I, I, as far as one loss record? That's scheduled. 500 would be very successful, wouldn't it, Tim? Well, uh, you know, very the thing is, number one, that I think you're going to look forward to a lot more excitement. It's going to be an oh, exciting year. An offense as exciting the, as the second ball is going to go so. from one end of the field to the other. And I think this, I think they have some talent on defense. I think that they can rush the passer. There's some guys that can rush the passer. And the difference in winning and losing in that league, or any league, is you rush theirs and protect yours. Yeah, and Barry Sanders protect the quarterback. That I just can't <laughs> wait to see. Okay, I think you're going to see a very good Lions team oh this year. God. We'll be back with Detroit Drive head coach Tim Markham right after this. Steering you straight at American Jeep Eagle, the newest dealer in Monroe. With new deals and new ideas, we're the straight deal and straight talking dealership Monroe's been waiting for. With friendly professional people to talk to and a big selection to choose from, you're sure to find just the new Jeep or Eagle you want at a price you can brag about. That's the American way. Steering you straight to a deal that's great. American Jeep Eagle, next to Frenchtown Square in Monroe. Travel. Fastball, fly ball, deep to left field. It is gone! It's two run homer. Tiger win! Whitaker. A high hopper up the middle. Whitaker back of the bag. Here's the throw. Got him! What a play by Lou Whitaker! Morris.
out to George Brett. He got him on strike. Morris threw it right past George Brett, his 10th strikeout of the night. Binary Computers is celebrating their ninth anniversary and how they've become one of Detroit's top independent computer dealers is really simple. A great selection of brand name computer products, outstanding service, and highly knowledgeable trained consultants who make things understandable in plain English. Binary now has facsimile machines and telephone systems, so stop in for special anniversary savings at Binary Computers, Metro Detroit's business computer center, Woodward at 12 Mile, Berkeley. Remember, if you haven't got a computer, you'd better get one before your competitor does. What do these women have in common? They were all Girl Scouts. Girl Scouting showed them that they could do or be anything. An ambassador to the United Nations or an Olympic champion. Girl Scouting inspires girls to dream big and prepares them to meet the challenges of a demanding adult world. Your daughter should be a Girl Scout. She'll be in very good company and she'll get the right start. Back on Sports View with Tim Markham, the head coach of the Detroit Drive. John Sally coming up next. We'll have some fun with that. <clears throat> <laughs> He'll have some fun with you. <laughs> Tim, let's talk more now about arena football. We got okay. the Lions last time. Enough said about those guys. But uh, let's talk about the arena football. Will it make it? Well, I think so. I think we've got a, uh, a good product. And we're not trying to, to be anything other than just what we are, the arena football. And uh, people are entertained when they come down and uh, we don't have to have a stadium of 60,000 people. You know, 15 will be just fine. If you own the arenas, you make a good point that you've got yeah. to own those. What's, a, what's the status that, of that around the league of, now? I mean, yeah. how many people can you say, or how many cities around the league well, that, could support arena football? That's exactly what we are doing right now. We are in the arenas, we are co-promoting the events uh, as, as on ice capades or whatever. And that's the way the league is structured. Nice capades. I like the way yeah, you put that. That's pretty good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. At two and zero, oh, you guys are in a pretty good position. Can you win this thing again? Win well, it. There's only one. Well, how many make games it, are left? Make it, make it three well, championships. Still, for Tim how many games left? We still have to win the playoff series. Yeah, but yeah. how many games are left we in the season? We have two two regular season. All oh, right, games you have to win it. I mean, they the win only one game in Detroit is going to be this Friday night. Yeah, this Friday. Well, now we could work into two other games in the playoffs, in the playoffs. depending upon our record and our probably attendance and so forth. So. But we hope that everyone will come out and give it a shot. If you haven't seen it, oh, you know, yeah. have you seen one? Yes. No, I, how'd you no, like? I have not seen I enjoyed one. It. I have not I been enjoyed it. Been I've there? seen a couple on TV, but I've not been now, down TV down is not. What is it going to take? Not it really, because you know that if they come back, it's going to be either it's going to be a team in Detroit because you won the championship, exactly. you led the league in attendance and right. all that stuff. What do you expect for the game Friday night here? Attendance-wise? Yeah. Packed uh, house? I think so. I think we will. All right. Coach, thanks very much. Good luck this year. Thanks for joining us on the show. Once again, our sponsors today, Al Dietrich Olds, Sports Fans Journal, TCOM Pagers, Top Hat, The Sting, Cattleman's Meat Center, American Jeep Eagle, Pass, Binary Computers, and Duke Seafood. And Sports Fans Journal. I said Sports Fans Journal. I'm not saying it anymore. <laughs> thanks for joining us, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody.